I wanted to start the weather discussion today with a movie of some extraordinary waves crashing onto the coast of Situate, Massachusetts, which is about 30 miles to the south of Boston. This uh, storm from yesterday and the day before over the northeast United States was really quite extraordinary. And this is just one of the tail end damage events uh, that it was uh, responsible for. And so you can see these waves crashing on the seawall, which is about 10 feet high. It doesn't look like it, but it's 10 feet high. And then the waves crash right over the, the sides of these homes and all kinds of damage goes on here. And This is a common event in these winter storms. In fact, when I was a boy, my father would bring me out to Nahant Beach, which is on the north shore of Massachusetts, close to where he grew up. And he didn't like to go to the beach during the summertime because there was too many crowds and you know he didn't like that too much. So we went in the wintertime and I got to see this kind of stuff live routinely from a safe enough distance that you could be inspired by the awesome nature of it without being in fear for your life. But this is unbelievable, the kind of stuff that you can see in these winter storms in the northeastern United States. It left an indelible impression upon me, and I'm sure that it's part of the reason why I'm uh, doing the thing that I'm doing with my life, spending uh, my life thinking about winter storms. So quite fascinating. And this storm, of course, wrought a lot of havoc to the eastern United States. I looked around for some of the snowfall reports, and the, the heaviest snowfall I could find was at Mount Arlington, New Jersey, 35.1 inches of snow over the last two days. And quite a number of locations had more than two feet in northwest uh, New Jersey, parts of Pennsylvania, and southern New York State. So this was a really incredible uh, winter storm, one that young people, especially growing up in these regions, will never forget. And uh, we have some things to say about its uh, situation on the rest of our weather discussion today. And that is right here, and so you get a sense of what's going on across the continental United States and adjacent waters. So here is uh, the cyclone itself that's spinning around over Maritime Canada. It's still, i got to get rid of that movie. Yeah, it's still spinning around over Maritime Canada. And you can see snow on the far western side of it. Part of it, perhaps, lake effect from Lake Ontario. But nonetheless, there's snow over southern uh, Quebec. There's snow over Newfoundland and um, parts of Prince Edward Island. So this is a massive event that got, just got stronger and stronger as time uh, went forward uh, during this event. Okay. So um, And then over the central United States, a big region of anticyclonic high pressure over us. So crystal clear skies again today. We'll stay warm today. Today will be the last really warm day, unambiguously warm day of the of this stretch. And then we will uh, have some unsettled weather moving in from this complex of relatively unsettled weather across the intermountain states and the west coast. We'll see this new disturbance coming in on shore on the west coast in the satellite. It's this one here that's going to get itself organized. It's very poorly organized right now over the intermountain west, uh, southern Manitoba into um, Montana and parts of western Wyoming. That's going to get better organized as it makes its way eastward and gives us some substantial weather threat for uh, tomorrow and tomorrow evening especially. That will be followed by brutally cold air. We will stay cold for a whole week and we'll be colder than we've even come close to uh, during this season in the next week. It's really going to be brutal. So that's not something to look forward to. The surface temperatures around the country today are... Uh, are pretty cold in our little pocket of the woods. We have 9 degrees at Green Bay. We have 2 where we are, 12 at Houghton, Michigan. So here's the cold spot right over and west of Lake Michigan. Everywhere else, relatively warm, actually. The, the average high at this time of year in, in Madison is somewhere in the low 20s. So everywhere along the eastern seaboard, even places that had fresh snow, including northwest New Jersey, where it had almost 3 feet of snow, temperatures at 8 o'clock local time are almost uh, you know mid to high 20s. So getting close to the freezing mark. So it might be a relatively easy dig out today compared to what it'll be if you let it go into the weekend because it's going to get cold there too later uh, at, than us. But it's going to get cold over the northeast United States. So time to dig out today. Uh, the central plains are relatively warm as well. Uh, St. Louis 23 in the morning for February 3rd. It's not so unusual. It's a little chilly. 26 at Little Rock maybe is bordering on somewhat unusual. Same with Jackson at 27. But um, it's relatively cold. In, the further south you go, it gets more anomalously cold than it is uh, maybe in the central part of the country. And on the west coast, where there's just one after another of uh, sort of weak weather disturbances coming across uh, somewhere along the coast today over the northwest coast, temperatures are around 40 degrees. So we're dealing with uh, relative warmth at, that, uh, at those locations. So here's this morning's satellite movie over the continental United States and adjacent waters. And just 
Look at the size of this beastly storm that is the one that's responsible for all the extraordinary weather over the, the northeastern United States with the nearly three feet of snow right about where the cursor is. Um, this is a huge scale storm. It's, the clouds are affecting places in the southern Labrador Sea at the same time as they're drifting across Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So this is an extraordinary uh, scale event. And you can see that it's rotating, broadly rotating counterclockwise with the center somewhere here, maybe in the Gulf of Maine, right off the state of Maine. And um, heavy, not heavy precipitation, but some still lingering precipitation on the western side. Places that have seen snow all day, yesterday and the day before, may even see a shower today, like in Harrisburg, Allentown, places like that. So incredible. Uh, the central United States, crystal clear, you can see. Very interesting. And on the west coast, one after another of these weak disturbances. This one we'll get a better view of in just a minute when we go out to the West Coast satellite movie. So it's an active period on both coasts as it was on Monday and less active in the interior of the country. And here's the radar summary over the continental 48 states. And there's that moderate snow. Uh, it's sort of uh, on the far eastern edge of Lake Ontario. I'm not sure it's a lake effect, but it's probably enhanced by the presence of the lake. Um, and then some light snow over parts of southern New England, and then some also over Maritime Canada, and a bald spot here near the center of the circulation. The storm is uh, sort of weakening, finally. And then here's the line of precipitation that's a little bit broken up by the high Bighorn Mountains here in, in parts of uh, Wyoming, but that line is the weather feature of interest for us for tomorrow afternoon, evening, and Friday morning. That's going to be coming through us. I think we'll start as rain on Thursday night, and then we'll turn to snow, and after the snow ends, uh, or even during the ending of the snow, it'll start to get much colder during the day Friday and Saturday. And then here's evidence of a weaker disturbance that's making its way on shore in the far Pacific Northwest coast of Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. We'll see this more vividly illustrated in the satellite in just a minute. But you can see most of the country is enjoying a pretty nice precipitation-free day, and where we are, especially, second day in a row, brilliant sunshine, so that's pretty nice. And then finally, the West Coast satellite image, which kind of sums up some of the elements we just saw. First, the cloud mass across Idaho, Montana, into far western North Dakota. That's the organizing weather system that's going to, uh, you know, leave its, uh, impose itself on us on Thursday night into Friday. And here's this little weak, look at this, little uh, counterclockwise spinning cloud mass that comes on shore in Washington, Oregon, Northern California. Really pretty little small storm, and that's what's giving that second round of radar reflectivity that I mentioned over Oregon, Washington, and California. So not a particularly potent storm. Uh, these are not deep clouds. There's not really any heavy precipitation. But nonetheless, it's well organized, even in its small scale. And then further out to the west, this is the state of Hawaii where my cursor is. Okay, So I've got a cloud mass that stretches from south of Hawaii, which means it's in the tropics in the Central Pacific, extending all the way into the northern Gulf of Alaska. In fact, probably clouding over uh, I don't know what happened to the image there. It'll come back in a second. Clouding over the former Queen Charlotte Islands off the coast of British Columbia, which are right here. So this is an extreme cloud street that comes, uh, you know, 30, 40 degrees, uh, maybe even more than that, north longitude, uh, latitude. sorry. And there's the upper level cutoff disturbance associated with it. So there's going to be a change in the complexion of the flow over the Pacific Basin. This thing will become a dominant so-called ridge over the western of the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean and that may change the nature of the weather over us uh, after our cold spell so we'll have to see whether or not that's true.